Good morning, Angel. Emergency. Prop 1, no, okay? Prop 1, no. Prop 1 equals hell. Okay? So, vote no to Prop 1. Okay, listen to this. There's no doubt about it. California faces the worst homeless crisis in the country, and it's only getting worse. But politicians in Sacramento have put a very deceptive measure on your March 2024 primary ballot, Proposition 1. Coming up, we'll tell you why Prop 1 is a bad idea, why it will make homelessness worse, and what we can do to actually solve the problem. I'm Carl DeMaio, Chairman of Reform California, and my ballot measure committee is fighting Proposition 1. It's on the March 2024 ballot. It is the only statewide initiative on the ballot, uh, but that doesn't make it good. It is actually quite bad. In this short podcast, we're going to walk through the various reasons why Prop 1 should be voted down, why you should vote no on Proposition 1, and we're going to talk about homelessness in California and how we can actually solve it. Uh, I want you to do one thing, though, as we go through this podcast. I want you to go check out our campaign website, the No on Prop 1 website. Here is the um, URL. It's cleanupourstreets.org. Cleanupourstreets.org. Go to that website, cleanupourstreets.org. You can follow along uh, the the various arguments I'm going to lay out here and uh, see for yourself. So let's start out first and let's talk about homelessness. There is no doubt homelessness is out of control in California. It is one of the biggest problems, the biggest nuisance issues. We have people on the street who are suffering. Uh, And when no one likes to see that, we're all very compassionate. We wanna help others in need. Uh, So this is not about whether you wanna help people in need. I think all of us reasonable people want to help people in need. The question is, are we doing it right? Are we doing it effectively? Um, Is it cost efficient or is there an ulterior agenda, a scam that's going on that's using the homelessness crisis in order to further special interests? And that's what Proposition 1 is all about and the failed policies of California politicians as it relates to homelessness. So let me give you a quick primer. Uh, Those of you who've watched this podcast before know that we've talked about homelessness a lot. We've delved deep into the reasons why people become homeless. We've given all the facts and the figures and the studies and the reports. We've walked through all the evidence-based and data-driven solutions on homelessness. But I'm going to give you a real quick Reader's Digest overview. Homelessness is not a jobs problem. Homelessness is not a housing problem. Homelessness is a dysfunction problem. An individual is dysfunctional. An individual is not able to earn money to even pay for any sort of housing. They are completely disabled, not just physically. Most of them, uh, some might have physical ailments, but the disability is mental health and substance abuse. That's what the main driver of homelessness is in America. Chronic homelessness, it's the leading cause of chronic homelessness. Every single study shows that. And so when I tell people, Homelessness is not a jobs program or a problem or a housing problem. A lot of people sometimes are like, what do you mean? If we didn't just get these people jobs, they're going to be fine. No, if you actually look at people who are homeless, they can't hold a job. They can't keep a job because they're dysfunctional. They have lots of skills. In the 1990s and early 2000s, a lot of the homeless advocates said, said we need to do job training. We need to do employment programs. Look. Unemployment is 3.4% in California. I mean, potted plants are getting jobs, so it's not a jobs issue. Homelessness has actually not corresponded to ups and downs in the unemployment rate. So it's not a jobs issue. Because the people who have a a substance abuse problem or a uh, mental health problem, they're not able to keep a job because if you have a substance abuse problem, you have chronic absenteeism. Uh, You're not able to actually perform the job because you're home, strung out, high, overdosed. Uh, Or if you have a mental health problem, typically that brings hostility 
and controversy and strife with other employees as well as customers. And so people don't keep a job very long when they do have a mental health problem. There's also obviously depression that causes chronic absenteeism as well. Uh, so it's not a jobs issue. All the data shows that. No corresponding relationship between the unemployment rate, job availability, and homelessness. It's also not a housing issue, and I have proof. Since 2010, would you agree with me that housing costs have gone up dramatically? Remember, in 2010, it was the tail end of the big housing recession. So we can all agree that housing costs went up across the country, by the way. They went up in Dubuque, Iowa. They went up in Florida. They went up in Texas. They went up in every single part of the country from 2010 on. Let's look at homelessness. Homelessness nationwide has gone down by double digits. Nationwide, homelessness has gone down since 2010 by double digits. Oh, in all the other states except for California. California homelessness is off the charts. Double digit increases across the state, as well as triple digit increases in the urban areas of San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Diego, among other areas. So why is California so different? If, if, if housing costs went up around the country, but in other parts of the country, homelessness went down. I think we can remove the notion that housing costs or housing availability is a major driver of homelessness. There could be some temporal uh, causes of homelessness relating to housing. You, you know, lose your housing, you're on the streets, you're living out of your car for a few days or a few weeks. Those people who have a, a disruption in their living situation typically are off the street very quickly because they're not dysfunctional. They are functional. It's just they had a disruption in housing. And most people, even in the most expensive housing markets, if they are functional, particularly in this economy, will have a job and be able to figure out maybe not the best housing, maybe you know multiple people in a, an apartment, <clears throat> but they are able to find housing even if it takes up a disproportionate share of their income. They're not homeless because of it. It's not good it is a struggle no doubt about it but higher housing costs are not seen as a major driver of homelessness because you can see nationwide housing costs going up homelessness going down if a homeless person was given an opportunity for a 500 hundred dollar apartment in san francisco they wouldn't spend 500 dollars on the apartment they wouldn't they'd spend 500 dollars shooting up their veins or snorting in their nose guaranteed or drinking. Or they would take the $500 and because they are mentally ill, they really wouldn't be able to do much in terms of um, deciding, oh, I'm gonna go live in this apartment. I'm going to transact business. A lot of these people are so strung out, so schizophrenic, so paranoid, that even 60% of homeless people offered a bed in a shelter, turn it down. That's the latest stats from California. Given a free bed in a warm shelter, 60% of homeless people turn it down. Why? Why would someone turn down a bed? Because the mental illness causes them not to trust the system, not to want to be inside. They want to be outside. They're not even, in some cases, aware of just how bad their situation is. They live almost in an alternate universe. Unless you're able to get on top of the substance abuse issues and the mental health issues, nothing happens. Now, across the country, they're showing the de decreases in homelessness because they're using a different model. It's called accountability. It's called partner between law enforcement and the courts. And I, I, it is atrocious how the Democrats and the homeless uh, advocates say, we don't want to criminalize homelessness. Find a homeless person, you're probably going to find a rap sheet. I'll just tell you this right now. Because of their mental health problem or their substance abuse problem, Many of them are running afoul of the law. It's not just, oh, you're trespassing or there's vagrancy issues here, loitering and, and you know, uh, you're, you're camped out in front of a place that you're not supposed to be. No, no, no. Typically, there's violence involved, there's theft, there's drug use. So they do have criminal records. And in other states, when someone commits a crime, whether it's one of the process crimes of loitering or trespassing or some of the more serious crimes, they don't just throw the homeless person in jail. They go to a diversion program. And the court and law enforcement and social service agencies are partnered to get that person the life-changing help that they need. That's how the system works in other states. That's why they have double-digit decreases in homelessness. But that system does not exist in California. In California, our liberal politicians have decided to coddle the homeless and just say, oh, sorry, can't force you to do anything you don't want to. And in fact, in California, social service providers receiving any government funding 
are prohibited from requiring, in exchange for help or a bed, requiring a homeless person undergo mental health or substance abuse evaluation or, or even treatment. It is banned. So you're not able to get money for your homeless program if you want to use a model that works in all the other 49 states. It's, it's, it's absolutely insane what they're doing in California on homelessness. It's why our homelessness crisis has gotten worse. And I'm going to get to Prop 1 in just a moment. I just wanted to go through this foundational briefing for you so that you know why we have a homeless crisis in California, unlike other states. And the media in California does not want to point out that, hey, California is the outlier here. We're really not like the other states. We have, we have a monumental crisis, even though we're spending more per capita, more per homeless person, and more on the aggregate than any other state in the country on homelessness. Yet we have the worst results. California represents 12% of the U.S. population. But we account for more than 50% of the unsheltered homeless population in our country. Do you understand? The problem is California. It's the California politicians and their misguided failed policies that have created the conditions for homelessness to flourish. Also, I mentioned law enforcement. In California, we don't enforce laws. So in other states, um, law enforcement typically will get a homeless person on petty theft, uh, violence or a drug abuse. Again, connecting back to homelessness being a substance abuse issue. Um, in California, we don't have drug laws anymore. We don't enforce drug laws. We don't enforce petty theft. We don't enforce uh, you know, uh, it, threats and violence and assault and battery. We, we don't do that in California. We have so many George Soros backed prosecutors and Prop 47, Prop 57, it's just a mess. And so the very tools that other states give their law enforcement agents to help move people and leverage people off the street into help, we don't have those in California. So if you want to fix the root problem of homelessness, you've got to give law enforcement back their tools. We have to go back to a system of accountability and rules. We have to mandate treatment. And we've got to say, we're willing to give you a bet. We're willing to make sure that you have a safe, clean, warm place to sleep at night, and we have more than enough money for shelter beds. Not condos, which we're going to get to in a minute with Prop 1. Shelter beds. Bunk-styled shelter beds, which is what other states use. If it's good enough for service members of the military, it should be good enough for homeless people. We don't have that system in California, but we can get that if we demand change by politicians. Now, I say all of this because... Now we've got the same politicians who royally have screwed up the issue of homelessness in California. These same failed, out of touch, negligent politicians are coming forward with Prop 1, saying, hey, trust us, double down, triple down on our failure. Prop 1 comes from the same people that created the crisis, who have no credibility on the issue of homelessness and should not be trusted with a single penny more of our taxpayer money because they have failed so miserably. What does Prop 1 do? Well, let me share with you the official voter guide. You're gonna get this in the mail. It's the um, uh, kind of newspaper printed uh, booklet. You'll get this, uh, take a look in your mailbox, and then if you turn to Prop 1's page, let's see here. Here's the title. Proposition 1, authorizes 6.38 billion in bonds to build mental health treatment facilities for those with mental health and substance abuse challenges. Provides housing for the homeless, legislative statute. So that's the title. Who wrote that title? That's right, a California Democrat politician. So the politicians get to craft the title you see on the ballot, and they always are deceptive and misleading in how they phrase and, and, and word these uh, measures. You may think, based on this title, that two things are happening here. Well, three things. First, you're borrowing money, $6.3 billion. Second, that you're building mental health treatment facilities. And you're thinking, wow, yeah, we need more treatment. Well, hold on a second. Treatment is a service. A facility is a building. This is important that you look at the word facility. Treatment is a service provided by a counselor, a clinician, a psychiatrist, a, a drug therapist. Treatment, nobody disagrees with treatment. We want treatment. 
But what is the emphasis here on facility? It means that you're building something, a building. And then the next part is a more building. It provides housing for the homeless. Now, does it provide shelter? No, 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 not shelter beds. No, it provides condos, units, taxpayer-funded, permanent supportive housing. And emphasis on the word permanent. This is the failure of these politicians. And, and you're going to see in a moment why, because it has nothing to do with actually solving the problem. It has everything to do with campaign contributions. So this initiative borrows money to build things. Borrows money to build things, not shelters, but housing units. And I can tell you this right now, you cannot build your way out of homelessness. You have to intervene your way out of homelessness. You have to treat your way out of homelessness and you have to hold accountable to get your way out of homelessness. None of that is suggested in Prop 1. So let's go through and look at what Prop 1 actually does. Go to that website, cleanupourstreets.org, cleanupourstreets.org. You notice no one won cots, not condos. Because, and I know some people think that might be flippant, but again, we're trying to create a, a, a campaign that catches people's attentions. Cots, not condos really means that we shouldn't be focusing on these government subsidized mega projects, government welfare projects in our neighborhoods. But instead, we should be focusing on what shelter beds are needed to keep people whole, warm, and safe at night while we focus our dollars on treatment to break the cycle of dependency. That's the solution to homelessness. Not giving everyone a taxpayer-funded key to a taxpayer-funded um, uh, condo. And the presumption is that we're going to be doing this forever. Now, the reason why they want to build so much stuff is that the far-left activists are pushing a socialist agenda with Prop 1 and their failed policies on homelessness. They believe that housing is a government service, that government should be providing as a socialist package housing for everyone. Remember, these are the same people who say that we should have government-run health care, government-run everything. Well, they also believe in government-run housing, like the Soviet apartment uh, lottery that uh, works so well for the, for the, for the Soviet Union, right? Um, so we have the top five reasons why you should vote no on Prop 1, and I want you to follow along. First, while they're borrowing money, $6.38 million, to build things, where's the money coming from? Oh, you're going to love this, or you're actually going to hate it. They're raiding mental health service dollars. Now, you can't make this crap up. They literally are raiding the mental health treatment and putting the money into the hands of who? Developers, housing developers, rich housing developers who are politically connected and give campaign contributions. More on that in a minute. But look, the diversion of funding from mental health services is significant with Prop 1. In fact, more than a third of the money currently allocated um, in a special tax fund for mental health treatment will be raided by Prop 1, taken away from treatment professionals. We're talking about psychiatrists and drug therapists and counselors. That money would then go in the hands of rich developers. This is absurd and the media should be screaming about it, but they won't because they are too liberal and in the tank trying to protect Gavin Newsom and these other politicians that are backing this scam. So the first thing you need to know is that mental health treatment is gutted and undermined by Prop 1. Second, the people who get the money are these developers. Though they say that they're uh, building uh, mental health treatment facilities, again, those are just housing first uh, units. Um, then they also come in and say, we'll do more units for people who are homeless generally. But we're talking about billions of dollars on a credit card being given immediately to politically connected developers to build these mega government welfare projects throughout the state. Where are they going to put them? Oh, I have the answer to that in just a moment. You're not going to like it. But the money going to the developers is a colossal waste because the latest government audits show that per unit, we're paying about a million dollars for each of these condos per unit. That is not affordable housing. That is a scam. It is a boondoggle. And Prop 1 puts your money into that boondoggle into that scam. 
we need to take our dollars and put them into treatment and instead shelter beds at a much, much more affordable cost per unit, not these million dollar condos. And, and look at, you know, type in um, to, to Google if you'd like and, and do your own research, um, type in cost per unit permanent supportive housing and just brace yourself. You're going to see obscene numbers of 800,000, 900,000. There's a project in Southeast San Diego that use shipping containers to create housing units for homeless people as part of this housing first uh, developer scam. $580,000 per unit to put people in shipping containers. This is insane. Now, there, there's a reason why it costs so much because there's so much corruption and um, uh, uh, payoffs. Um, billions in more debt. We're taking out a credit card with Prop 1 and immediately bonding $6.38 billion worth of debt, which then has to be repaid with interest over 30 years. We're giving all that money immediately to the developers and forcing taxpayers to be on the hook for those payments. Notice we are heading into a financial crisis in California. We have a $68 billion budget deficit. It's actually worse than that per year. And this is only going to make things worse at a time when we can ill afford more debt. Fourth, it locks in failed homeless policies. Prop 1 actually contains very terrible and uh, troubling language, mandating that any funds spent must conform to the existing flawed policies that have caused homelessness in California to spike, specifically prohibiting treatment providers from mandating mental health and substance abuse accountability. There are no rules that are required. There are no strings attached. Just give the key, funded by you, the taxpayer, to someone who's got a severe problem and is dysfunctional and will never, ever leave that unit on their own accord except in a body bag. That is failed. It is uniquely uh, troubling to California. It is enshrined, though, in Proposition 1. And the only way to change it after that point would be another vote of the people, and, you know, that's never going to happen. Now, let's talk about where these housing projects will go. Well, they'll go anywhere the politicians and the developers want to put them. Because Prop 1 contains very sinister language that eliminates your right to vote down a controversial government-subsidized welfare project. They can walk in and put a Section 8 housing project in your neighborhood and say, you know what, we're just going to put it here. Everyone has to do their fair share, and that's what people like Gavin Newsom and other politicians have said on the left, that everyone has to take a homeless shelter in their neighborhood. Everyone has to take one of these mega projects, whether you like it or not, to quote Newsom from a previous effort. Well, if Prop 1 passes, it strikes language that's currently in the state constitution that gives you, as a voter, the right to put this project on the ballot in your local area to vote it down. That right will be removed, eviscerated, eliminated if Prop 1 passes. So you will have no recourse and no ability to stop a bad development project bringing crime and grime into your neighborhood. It's insane. And this is not a not-in-my-backyard argument. This is about accountability. If a project is good, then the voters will look at it and say, okay, we know that there are protections and oversight and accountability, uh, and we're reasonable, and we're compassionate, and we're wanting to help people out. And with the right protocols, right oversight, right accountability, a project can be successful. If you have those things in place, trust the voters. But these Sacramento politicians don't trust the voters. They're trying to pull a fast one over on you, and they know it, and they want to stop you from stopping them at the ballot box. Now, now who benefits from Prop 1? Simple. The politicians and developers. Because remember, if you go back to the, the ballot title, what are we actually getting? We're getting mega housing projects, welfare housing projects, and we're getting facilities. And it's $6.38 million of your money. Million dollars per unit. You know where a lot of that money goes? Not just in the pockets of developers, but in the pockets of politicians in the form of campaign contributions. This is the whole, you know, follow the money, the sixth cycle. It's a racket, it's a scam. Borrow money, build a bunch of government subsidized housing units, and the developer gets rich and he shares a portion 
of the gains with the politicians in the form of massive campaign contributions, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. That's what you're going to get with Prop 1 if it passes. So I urge you to do the following. Join me in voting no on Proposition 1. The politicians that are backing it failed us. They will continue to fail us. This is a colossal waste of money, and it will hurt people on the streets because we're not intervening the right way to break the cycle of dependency and get them off the street. So I urge a no vote on Prop 1, and I'm asking you to chip in a contribution today. Uh, go to the website, cleanuparstreets.org, cleanuparstreets.org, chip in a contribution. It would go to my ballot measure campaign, Reform California ballot measure campaign that I chair. Um, every dollar is going into defeating Proposition 1 and doing everything we can to force politicians to do right by uh, the homeless and do right by taxpayers. Please share this website because the liberal media does not want to cover this important story uh, and give factual information and analysis on Prop 1. So share the website, cleanuparstreets.org, like this video, and share it on your social media feed. That is very important to spread the word as to why people should vote no on Proposition 1. Until next time, Carl DeMaio, Chairman of Reform California. Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and smash that notification button so you can stay up to date on all the developments in California news and politics. Also, please visit the website, reformcalifornia.org, for ongoing news coverage and to join one of our campaigns in the fight to take back our state. If you can, please sign up as a volunteer or chip in a contribution. This episode... Angel, okay, we're gonna work, okay? It's gonna be Prop 1, no. Both no to Prop 1, okay? It's gonna be hell. If that pass, okay, Angel? Okay. You know what to do. You know what to do. Prop one, no. Okay.